Right, good morning grade 11s. Today is Wednesday the 6th of May and we are continuing with functions. Um, just a gentle reminder to you, please remember that you're going to use your calculator in table mode and you need at least three points to draw any function on either side. Today we're going to have a look at the hyperbola, what you've learned in grade 10. So this is a grade 10 revision session about the hyperbola, which will be followed with what you're going to do in grade 11 with a hyperbola. So the first thing I need to know about a hyperbola is how to recognize when it's given to me using a formula. So the formula for hyperbola is y equals to a over x plus q. Now what do I need to know? Now in grade 10 when I introduce the hyperbola to my grade 10s, I explain it to them emphasizing the word hyper. Hyper in hyperbola means that it has two of everything. There is two asymptotes and there are two lines of symmetry. Okay, so what is the asymptotes in grade 10? The grade 10 version is x is equal to 0 and y is equal to q. So what is a, a asymptote? It means that it's basically like a brick wall. The graph is not allowed to cross those lines. Right, so how did you calculate the lines of symmetry in a hyperbola in grade 10? Is you used x plus q and you used minus x plus q to set up your two straight lines. So in grade 10, there was no y-intercepts because of the x equal to 0 asymptote. Okay, so how do I calculate the x-intercept? Always make y equal to 0. What are the two other important things I need to know? The domain, x can be any real number, but it may not be 0 due to that asymptote. If I talk about the range, it refers to the y-values. It can be any y-value except the asymptote y cannot be equal to q. What are the two first things that you are taught? You have two different shapes for a hyperbola. One where a is positive. So where a is positive, the curves will be in your first and your third quadrant. Where a is negative, a negative hyperbola, is where I have my curves basically in my second and my fourth quadrant. Right, so what does the Q value do? The Q value in grade 10, we were only allowed to move graphs up or down. So the Q value moves a graph up or down. So in your notes on page 16, you have this example. You are more than welcome to pause this video and quickly do the example and then correlate it with mine. I've added a few things. Um, I've added the asymptotes, the line of symmetry, the x-intercepted domain and the range before you get started. Okay. So when you do do this graph, the first thing you need to identify sketching a hyperbola are the two asymptotes. Now looking at this, this is the grade 10 hyperbola. So one um, asymptote is automatically y, x equal to 0 and y equals to 1. So on my graph, I have to go and indicate with dotted lines or little lines that is x equal to 0 and y equals to 1 I'm going to add that in. Okay, now you will see going forward, dealing with the hyperbola and the exponential graph, that I have constantly used my pink highlighter to highlight the asymptotes, even when I completed the homework questions. That's the first step in drawing a hyperbola. 
Lines of symmetry is only when you do answer the question if it's asked, but this is just for practice. So lines of symmetry, because it's a hyperbola, it's hyper, there will be two. The first one will have a positive x combined with the q value. The second one will have a negative x combined with the q value. As easy as that. Now back to the graph. Where do I get the x-intercept? And the reason why I want to work out the x-intercept, because the asymptote has moved the graph one place up, it means that my x-axis will have an intercept. How do I work it out? I make y zero. So I'm going to move, if y is zero, I'm going to move the one to the left-hand side, which means I will have minus x equal to four, moving the minus x equal to negative 4. So this is marked as well. So the asymptotes are marked and the x-intercept is automatically marked. Okay, so before I get the domain and range, I need to work out what are my points. So mode, table, I'm going to put in 4 over and to get x, I press alpha and the bracket button. Go to the side, plus 1. Um, there's no second equation. I'm going to let my graph guide me. It's got a minus 6 on the left and it's got a plus 6 on the right. And I want 1 every interval. Now, keeping in mind, I need three points. So I'm going to try and be as accurate as possible. So at negative 5, I have 0, 2. That's about there. I've got my minus 4 and 0. Then when I get to negative 2, I have a minus 1. So I'm trying to get the points where I have an accurate value. Right. So with my x-intercept, I now have three other points. I'm just going to label one of them. Minus 2 goes with negative 1. And I'm going to draw my first curve. Okay. Now I move down. Zero's error. That's my asymptotes. And I see at 1 and 5. I have to label one point at least in each quadrant. Two and three is my next point. And I'm going to use four and two. That's sufficient enough. I'm going to draw my curve in my first quadrant. Okay, that correlates with the fact that my A value is positive. That's my sketch graph. Now, if I do the domain, it's part of all the real numbers, but x may not cross over 0. y is part of all the numbers in my range, but y may not equal... I'm not going to write q. I'm going to write the value of q, which is 1. Okay, and that is your first example. Now, on page 17, you have another example there to do. I just want to cover the bottom here for you guys. So if we look at this one, if I look at the asymptotes, this is a grade 10 version of the question. X is equal to 0 and Y is equal to minus 2. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to add my X equal to 0 and my y equal to negative 2. Okay, just so that you see it clearly, I'm just going to add some color so that the consistency is there. Right, line of symmetry I don't need when I do <clears throat> The sketching of the graph, I just incorporated it because it's always asked. Line of symmetry, the first one is a positive x combined with the q value. The second one is a negative x combined with the q value. Now to draw this, because my asymptote has moved down, it is definite 
that my x-axis will have an intercept. When I look at my a value, I see that it's negative, so I know it's going to be in the second and the fourth quadrant. X-intercept, I make y zero, so I'm going to move minus three over x to the left-hand side so that it becomes positive. Then I'm going to move the x, so minus 2x, which means at minus 3 over 2, or minus 1 and a half, there is my x-intercept. Right, before I get to domain and range, I'm first going to draw it. So negative 3 over x, come on negative x, minus 2. My graph starts at negative 6, ends at 6, and I want 1. Right, so at negative 6, I will have minus 1 and a half. So there it is there. I'm going to add minus 6, minus 1 and a half. Then I have minus 3, and minus 1, there's another point, I've already labeled a point, I have negative 1 and 1, which means I am going to label that one because we're in a new quadrant and I have enough information to draw my curve. Right, then I have 1 and negative 5. I'm going to put that down there, and I have 3 and negative 3, and then I'm going to do 5 and minus 2.6, it's about there. Right, and I've got my three points to do my curve. So I get marks for my asymptotes, I get a mark for my intercept, and you will get a mark for the shape, and we can add a mark for the correct quadrants or points. Points mean labeled points. Right, so what is the domain? It's part of real numbers, but x may not equal zero. What is the range? y is equal to real numbers, but y may not equal negative 2. Okay, so that is the grade 10 revision. So what are we going to add in grade 11? In grade 11, we are going to add the following. So instead of just having a over x plus q, I am adding a p-value. Now, you found it the first time in parabolas. It works exactly the same. If P is, say, for instance, plus 3, it means that my graph will move left. Okay. If it's negative 3, it means that my graph shifted to the right. What is the other difference that you'll find? Asymptotes. I still have two asymptotes. But instead of being x equal to 0, x will be equal to the opposite p-value. And y is still equal to q. Lines of symmetry, still 2, but p also affect the values. Now, this is the only time, and you need to listen to me very carefully, when you work out the lines of symmetry, it's the only time you use the p-value as it is and not the opposite. So if I had plus 3, I will have plus 3. If I gave you a minus 3, I will use a minus 3. So the two equations finding the lines of symmetry, the first one is x plus the p-value as it is, plus the q-value. And the second one, I will have to find the sum of x and the p-value as it is, but multiplied by a negative, and then add the q to it. Okay, 
the rest of the stuff stays the same. With the graph moving left or right, I am now going to have a y-intercept, so I will have to get x equal to 0. And with an x-intercept, I still have it if it moves up or down. The change comes in as well. If I have the domain, it's still part of real numbers. But now x may not equal the opposite p-value. And the range, y is still real numbers. But y may not equal the q-value. Okay, we're now going to look at the examples on page 18, A and B, and then I'm going to do one number of the questions of exercise 6 to A, and then um, you will basically have a look at it. Okay, so let's have a look. So on page 18, you will find these examples based on the grade 11 hyperbola. So let's close the second one so that you're not distracted. Okay, so looking at this, the first thing I need to go and do is find my two asymptotes. So my two asymptotes is, asymptotes will now be x equal to, not negative 1, it will be, plus 1 and y equals 2. So at x equal to 1, so my graph has shifted one place to the right, and it also shifted two values up. y equals 2. Right. So once again, just consistency, let's keep it. Right, so there's my two asymptotes. Because my graph have shifted, I notice that my y-axis is open. It can have a interceptor. How do I work that out? I make x0. So y is equal to 2 over negative 1 plus 2. So y is equal to negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. That means if x is 0, y is 0. So there needs to be my next point, which is a mark. That's a mark. That's a mark. Right, because I noticed that my graph moved up, I also know that I will have an x-intercept. So I'm going to move the plus 2 to the left in my attempt to isolate my x. I'm going to times both sides with x minus 1. So I have minus 2 times x minus 1 equals to 2. Right, then I'll have minus 2x plus 2 equals to 2. Minus 2x equal to 0. So x is going to be 0. So, there we go. Same point. Okay, that doesn't leave me with much. Therefore, I need to go and find some values. So, on my calculator, in table mode, I'm going to have 2 over x minus 1 and plus 2. I'm going to start at negative 5 and end at 5. And in one step, I see that at minus 3, I will have 1 and a half. So I'm going to write that coordinate down. Then at minus 1, I will have 1 I already have a value there, 0 and 0 I have already got. So, I know that it's going to do that. Okay, on the other side, I have at 2, it will go up to 4. So, 2 and 4, I will have 
3 and 3 and I'll have 5 and 2 and a half. I have one point there. There we go. That is my hyperbola. If they had to ask me to show the equations of lines of symmetry, I need to show this to you. I have two equations I need to work out. The one is straightforward x plus p plus q. The other one is minus times by the sum of x plus p and q. And here I'm going to use the p value just as it is. So y is equal to x minus 1 plus p. So my first line is x plus 1. My second, I'm sorry, I just need to quiet my dog. Bella. That's online lessons for you. Right, so the second one, I'm going to have to take the sum of x and p as it is. Distribute a negative and add the q value. So I'm going to have minus x plus 1 plus 2. So my second line of symmetry is minus x plus 3. Okay. Now for the second example there. Please try this one before you look at my work. So that you can correlate. Now I see there's a negative, so I know it's going to be in the second and the fourth quadrant. And I can identify my asymptotes. So my asymptotes will be x equal to not plus 4, minus 4, and y equals to minus 2. So at minus 4, I am going to have an asymptote x equal to minus 4 and at y equals to negative 2. I'm going to have a graph. Okay, I might need to extend these values on this side. Minus 6, minus 7, right. Okay, the next thing I need to know, I see that the graph have shifted, so I will have a y-intercept. So y is equal to minus 12 over 4 minus 2. So that is going to be negative 3, negative 2, that's negative 5. So on my axis here, negative 5, I am going to have a intercept which means my graph will go down and the x-intercept y is equal to 0 is going to be, I'm going to move the 12 over x plus 4 to the left. I will have 12 equal to minus 2 times x plus 4. So 12 equals to minus 2x minus 8. That means I'm going to have 20 equals to negative 2. So x is negative 10. So even though my graph is wrong here, I'm quickly going to redraw the Cartesian plane so that we actually have values to work with. Okay, I can't give the examiner something he can't mark. Right, so I'm quickly going to do this. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 2, 4, 6, 8. Luckily, we give you the Cartesian planes always in a test or exam. So you don't have to spend so much time setting this up. Right, so we set at negative 5, 
we'll have an intercept and we said at negative 10 we will have another intercept and we have x is negative 4 that is my asymptote and something is not good going on with the dog but we will just work through it y equals negative that's where we are right so if I take my equation and add it on my calculator negative 12 over x plus 4 and minus 2 and we will have to start at negative 14 and we can reduce it to 6 and you'll see if you get insufficient memory it is basically two many values I'm just going to reduce it Bella I'm going to have negative 14 and I'm going to end at let's make it 2 right so I look at these values very quickly and I have minus 12 and there's one there I'm going to write minus 12 and minus 0 comma 5 and I'm going to have minus 10 and 0 we know that and minus 8 will be at 1 I need one more point let's go to negative 5 negative 5 will help me to go up there I'm going to write that down right so that is the first curve if I go down I have um, minus 2 and negative 8 I'm going to add that one there and I have 0 and negative 5 that's perfect I have 2 and negative 4 and I have enough points to do my curve right so that is my curve so if I rewrite my equation here I have x plus 4 4 minus 2 they can ask me lines of symmetry they can refer to the positive line as m greater than 0 that means I want x plus p plus q so using the p value as it is and the q value it's x plus 2 if they refer to m greater than 0 it means that I have to get the sum of x and p distributor minus and add the q. So I have x plus 4 and that's a minus 2. So I have minus x minus 4 minus 2. So it's minus x minus 6. Right, so that's my second example. You will have to do the homework on exercise 6. Please fo follow the planning there. Um, and then I'm going to record this one separately for you right now. Thank you.